What's up YouTube, welcome back to the shop. Today we're gonna to get back to working on this bad boy. This is the modern walnut silverware box, or it's gonna be eventually. This is the one that we did the, the rabbited domino joints in, and I set over to the side for a few days, worked on the sushi board while I had some walnut being delivered. Now I'm fully stocked, it's time to work on the lid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue up some boards that are gonna be long enough and wide enough, obviously, a little bit of overhang, and then we're gonna trim all that off, sand all this down, and make sure the lid profiles exactly with the outside of this because it will want that nice clean look. And then we're gonna do some brass inlay. For the second time this week, I've got to empty my dust collector. It's probably from the cherry countertop that we were milling up, uh, but I figured while I'm emptying it, I can tell you a little bit about my dust collector because that's a super common question, and I know I had that question. So I have the Oneida V-Series with a three horsepower motor, and I believe it's the 35 gallon steel drum. Uh, it's a workhorse. Absolutely great dust collector. Um, I have it going to all the big tools in my shop and there's plenty of power I could run into the rest of the tools, I just haven't done it yet. I have the remote control to it that I keep on my belt and then I also have the strobe light, which is essential for me because I will completely forget to change out the drum. I opted for the 35 gallon drum instead of the 55 gallon for a couple reasons. One of it was the weight. Uh, whether I'm taking this out to the woods and dumping it or I'm putting it in bags or whatever, it's just cumbersome to lift a, a 55 gallon drum. So 35 was just better for me. Another reason was the height of the entire uh, dust collector. I'm in a basement workshop. I do have decently high ceilings for a basement, but even still this thing is way up there. It's just a few inches from the ceiling. And so if I went with a bigger drum, we look at a higher profile and I just didn't want to do that.
Pitsy and I are taking a break, letting him run around outside. But while I'm out here, I like to do a little bit of tree identification. I've got this little guy that I believe came from that dude there. And there's more of them here. Maybe this is a cousin. But this is a black locust tree. You can see it has the rounded leaves to it. The bark is usually really coarse. And a lot of times you'll see these like pinky, orangey streaks that are in it. But what you can really tell with a black locust are the thorns. So it has thorns all the way down. And usually they are in pairs if they're a black locust. Thorn, thorn. Uh, honey locust, a lot of times you'll see a cluster, almost like a sea urchin on the, the trunk. The black locusts are usually like this, thorn, thorn, all the way through. And they are super fast growing trees. They may grow three or four feet in one season. And apparently I have a ton of them in my backyard. Locust, 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 locust. That and uh, ash, quite a few ash trees too. The lid's been drying all day, so I took it out of the clamps, and it's time to make it into an actual lid. I'm gonna chisel off some of this hardened glue, then we're gonna take it over to the table saw, we're gonna cut it to size, and then we're gonna put uh, dados, rabbits, whatever you wanna call them, all the way around so that this sits nicely into the box, and then we're gonna add brass. Thank you. 
we got the box lid in here and it has just enough wiggle room so that there's going to be some space for expansion and contraction over the seasons and then i've got it trimmed down where you can just barely feel it past the sides and that's going to be fine because we're going to sand all the sides down and it's going to make all of this flush so now it's time to inlay the brass this is a piece of brass flat stock and this is what we're going to inlay so we pretty much just line it up by eye to figure out aesthetically what looks best and then i'll set the table saw fence over for the first cut and then i put a ripping blade in the table saw so i'll make the first cut and then gradually go over i'm going to sneak up on this until this brass fits in the place and obviously this is long that's on purpose we'll get it so that it fits snugly in there mark it then we'll cut that off What's up, Fitzy boy? What are you doing? Just hanging out? It's time to inlay the brass into the lid and I cleaned up the brass first because I don't want to have any oil and grease and that kind of stuff uh, preventing the brass from sticking to the wood. So what I did was I cleaned it and then I did a quick buffing with some sandpaper just to kind of scuff it up a bit. So I think we're ready to go. And then what I also did was I put tape on the ends here because when you do this sometimes you could have your adhesive squeeze out and then it gets right into this ingrain and it is a pain to try to sand out. And it's even worse is if you get it in the end grain here on the underside of the lid. We don't want that. So put a little tape on there, that's gonna help out. To get the brass to stick to the wood, we're gonna go really simple. CA glue, yep, medium density CA glue. I've tried different glues and this one has seemed to be the best adhesive that I've found to combine wood and metal. So that's what we're gonna use. There you have it, brass inlay, and I think it looks killer. So 
I'm gonna do a few more things to get this prepped for a coat of finish. But thank you for joining me in my woodworking journey. And if you like this sort of content, please subscribe. I put out videos almost every day so you can see what's happening in my shop. And if you know somebody who likes this sort of content, please share it with them. And until next time, get in your shop, build something awesome.